Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out the Razer Naga Pro V2 mouse and we're going to be running through the software in today's video. Now if you didn't see my review video on this, I'm going to leave that down and below, but in this video we're going to be checking out the software. So let's go ahead and swap over to the computer here. So basically, once you install the Razer software, which is called Razer Synapsis, you're gonna be greeted with a screen like this. And up top, it's gonna show your devices up here. It's gonna show other random things here, like support tickets and just random Razer perks and whatnot. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the Razer Naga V2 Pro. So the first thing to note is that this mouse has three different detachable sides. You have the FPS gaming mode version, you have the MOBA version, and the MMO version. And you can see all of the buttons are along the side here and you can click on them to customize them. Also, you'll notice that this one has a checkbox. That's the one I currently have installed. Now, if you wanted to switch it out, the checkbox would switch. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over. We're gonna take this piece off. And now if we look on the screen, you're gonna see that there is no checks checkbox lit up. And now if we go ahead and switch to say the MMO version, which is right here, the one with a lot of buttons, we're gonna go ahead and attach that on the side here. You can see now that there is a checkbox for the MMO version. So the Razer software is gonna detect the detachable sides instantly. And you can program the buttons even if the detachable side isn't currently on the mouse. The way these hotkeys are saved to the mouse are through this onboard profiles button. So basically when you change a hotkey button on the side here, it's gonna automatically apply to the memory that's built into the mouse. So if you switch computers from your work computer to your home computer, it's always gonna have all of the memory settings saved on the mouse. And you can go ahead and do that by, uh, let's say you wanna drag this one here. So if I click drag to red, now it shows Spotler's profile is on the red one. So this is the onboard memory that's on the mouse and you can drag up to four different profiles. So one thing to note is that the options down here are gonna be your local storage, kind of like local settings that are saved to your computer. Anything up here is saved onto the mouse. Now the dashboard view, you're gonna see a few things here. The first thing to note is the profiles, which we just covered. You can go ahead and add, import them, rename it, duplicate it, export it, or even reset it. All of the settings are fairly straightforward. And the next thing to cover is the battery life. This kind of just shows where your battery is at and you know whether you need to recharge or not. Right now mine's plugged in, so it's gonna be at 100% for this video. And down here we have the mode switches. We covered this a little bit earlier. And then the first uh, profile here, the first view, is gonna cover the global buttons for the mouse. Now these settings are always gonna be active no matter what side piece you have attached. So the customizable buttons you can have on this mouse are the standard pointer clicks, which is left and right. You're gonna have your middle mouse button click. You're gonna have scroll up, scroll down. You're gonna have also the middle mouse button click, and then you're gonna have uh, the two buttons that are under the scroll wheel. And by default, this one's gonna toggle your scroll wheel settings, how sensitive the scroll wheel is. And then this one is gonna toggle the DPI settings. And these are all default settings. And then under the mouse, you're gonna have a profile switcher, which kind of switches these. So if you have multiple profiles, you can switch through them without even having the Synapsis app installed. And on the bottom, you're gonna have this button that's a standard. And what this is, is if you click it, it's gonna show Hypershift. And Hypershift is basically uh, you can change these buttons to act as a shift modifier button. So if we go ahead and actually see which uh, customizable options you have, here are the options that you get. So by default, it's gonna be one. If we click on the keyboard function, this is gonna give you default functions on the keyboard. So let's say you wanted this one button on the side of your mouse to be an alphabetical number, you can click which alphabet it is. Maybe you want it to do a number pad function Here's the number pad buttons, or maybe you wanted to do like a navigation button, which is, you know, things like shift or space, enter, escape, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of different um, options you have here. We're gonna go ahead and switch to mouse function. And what you get here is you can make this one button 
act as one of the mouse clicks. So that can be like your right click, your left click, scroll up, scroll down, et cetera, et cetera. And then you're gonna see this enable turbo mode, which basically if you click it, it's gonna tell, it's gonna ask you how many times you want this key to actually click. So maybe if you push the one button, how much times is it gonna do the left click? We can say, you know, seven times, one time, you know, 20 times, whatever you want. And it looks like the maximum amount you can have it click is 20 times. And next over here is the scrolling and we're gonna cover that a little later in the video. And this basically adjusts how the scroll wheel functions. And this is a super cool feature with the new Razer mice. Now over here we have sensitivity. This adjusts your DPI. You can have it where you toggle while you're holding the button on the fly, et cetera, et cetera. And that's gonna basically, you know, let's say you're in sniper mode on one of these games. When, when you're holding a button down, you can um, basically have it slow DPI just so you're a little more accurate. And then when you let go of the button, you can go back to a regular DPI mode. Up next, we have the enter device. And basically what this is, is if you have two Razer uh, products, you can make them work together. So you can hold this one button and it'll activate a different button on the keyboard if you have a keyboard. So this also acts kind of similar to a shift modifier button. Now next we have switch profiles. This is fairly straightforward. You can make this one button switch profiles, but by default it's registered as one of the buttons under the mouse since this isn't a super commonly used feature. Now this Razer Hypershift, this is basically what we covered earlier with the uh, standard button here where um, Hypershift basically makes keys act as a shift modifier button. And we're not really gonna cover the details on that too much in this video, but basically you can configure how the buttons actually work. Now, if we go back over here, go to launch program, you can also make the this launch a specific program. So here you can make it, if you click on the folder, you can make it navigate a specific file. So you would just go to your apps and then, you know, let's say you wanted to launch a specific game every time you push a button or a calculator or something like that you can go ahead and do that through there. Or you can make it launch a specific website. All you do is uh, enter the URL in there and then this one button would launch the URL you have inserted in there. Multimedia, this is um, basically your volume controls. You can mute your mic, up your volume, down your volume, skip your tracks, go previous, etc., etc. Window shortcuts, these are basically your standard windows type things. You can launch the calculator, notepad, uh, you can do some of these in the launch program feature uh, menu over here, but they also have them over here. So some of these are a little repetitive, uh, but you know, it's just an easier way to navigate through these. Text functionality, here you can do, uh, basically make it type in a text. You can do like emojis. You can uh, make it, uh, you know, basically write a specific text. Maybe you're, you want something, some sort of message to go out in a game. You know, you can just type in a text and it'll automatically write that text in every time you push the one button or whatever key you assign it to. And then disable just means you don't want the button to work at all. So those are pretty much the customizable settings you have here for each uh, button. Now the next thing to cover is the performance and this is basically your DPI setting. So if I go ahead and push the DPI button on the mouse, you can see that it cycles through them and it's gonna, you know, quickly allow for me to switch between slow, medium, fast, and these five different settings here. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it on stage three for now. Now, polling rate is basically how fast the laser works on the mouse, and this is gonna give you more accuracy on, um, like when you move your mouse, it's not gonna like blink as much. It's gonna move much more, uh, I guess, fluid on your mouse pad. Now, next we have the scrolling tab, and this is a really cool thing. So basically what this does is it adjusts how much tension requires for your scroll wheel to scroll and how many steps it takes. So so by default, if I scroll, you know, you can see this is kind of like the pattern of how it scrolls. If I switch to this one, you can see like this one feels much more fluid and it's very, it almost feels like it's vibrating the scroll wheel. This one here, adaptive, this one feels a little more rugged. You have to give a lot more force to actually make it push and it takes a bigger step. So this feels kind of bulky. Smooth scroll, this feels very cool. The, the scroll wheel pretty much has no tension. I can easily move it and it scrolls in little steps at a time. And if you want to make your own custom profile, you just go ahead and click the checkbox here, click custom, 
And then you can go ahead and scroll up here and click customize. And you can adjust how much tension is required. If I max it out, click save. Oh man, I can barely move the scroll wheel. It's like you have to put a lot of lot of force to even move it. Wow, this <laughs> this actually hurts my finger. Maybe something more like 50 would feel better. Yeah, this is a lot smoother with how much force is required. And then the setting under here is how big of a step it takes. So if we go to like 60, click save. Now this feels a lot smoother and uh, you can take like smaller steps. Very cool, it feels kind of like it's vibrating when you add more steps to it. So it's really cool that Razer gives you the option to uh, change how the scroll wheel actually works. Cause I know a lot of people are very particular about their scroll wheel. And then if you scroll down a little further, you can have browser detection, which basically says automatically switch the scroll wheel to smooth scroll on certain applications. So if you toggle this, you know, if you have say like Google Chrome or Edge enabled, it's gonna switch to uh, a more smooth type of scroll here. So you can go ahead and play with the settings there. Now, if we go to the top, there's also lighting settings and this basically controls the mouse's RGB lights. And this is fairly straightforward. This is the brightness, you know, you can max this thing out. I'm looking at the mouse now and let me share my uh, webcam here so you guys can see it. So you can see this is on the brightest, or this is in the middle, this is the brightest setting. This is very dim. And you can see that the uh, RGB lights do get adjusted. So let's go ahead and switch back over here. And then basically you also have a few different like pulsing settings here. You can uh, switch between um, static mode, audio meter, breathing, reactive, spectrum lighting. So if you do like breathing, you can make it breathe between like green and red, for example. And now it's like this Christmas theme. You also have reactive mode, you have spectrum cycling, basically a few different settings you can play with here. And then down here, you, there's switch off lighting. You can basically tell the Razer software on when the mouse should be turned off. So when your monitor's off, the lights will be turned off. And then when you're idle, you know, when the mouse hasn't moved, let's say after like five minutes, you know, the mouse will also uh, enter off mode. So that'll help preserve the battery a little bit here. So now we have the calibration mode. This is basically uh, the laser adjusts to your mouse pad. So whether you're using a mouse pad or you're using the mouse on a wooden surface or some random surface, you can adjust the tracking distance here and it'll kind of adjust based on what texture the mouse is scrolling on. And you can play with the settings there. And then here it shows also the lift distance on when you lift the mouse and land the mouse, how sensitive it is. And these are things you, you know, I'd recommend you just play with in person. Out of the box though, I haven't really played with this. I'm using it on a standard, um, standard mouse pad over here and I had no settings with it. This Razer mouse was working just fine. And the last tab we have over here is the power tab. And this is basically gonna enable sleep mode. So the mouse is gonna completely turn off after being idle for five minutes. And low power mode is basically when your mouse goes to a certain percentage, let's say it gets to 5% here, or let's say 10%, uh, the mouse is gonna perform at a slower rate, which is gonna kind of decrease your experience, but at least you can use the mouse without it completely turning off on you. So that's kind of a nice feature. So that pretty much covers the Razer Naga V2 Pro mouse software. With this mouse, it's gonna be very good for many different types of games. If you're an FPS gamer, you use this FPS tip. If you're a MOBA gamer, you use the MOBA tip here with six buttons. And if you're an MMO gamer, you go ahead and use the MOBA siding. And they all just come off so easily. And I already covered a lot of, uh, I've already did an in-depth review of this mouse on another video, which I'll link down in the description below. So that being said, if you like this video, go ahead and click the like button and leave your comments down below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.